This is an example video for proving trigonometric identities, problem type 2. First, recall that the purpose of proving trigonometric identities is to show that the original equation is true. So, in order to do this, we must transform the equation using trigonometric identities and algebra. When doing these problems, it is important to be familiar with the rules that you will need to use to prove the trigonometric identity as you need to justify each of your steps throughout the proof. Let's begin by looking at this problem. How do we know what to do first? Generally, a good first step is to look at the side of the equation with the most complex expression. In this case, the right side is more complex. We can look at the rules and identities to see what we can substitute into the expression on the right side that will allow us to simplify it. It is best to find an identity that has similar functions to the problem you are dealing with. This Pythagorean identity meets the criteria. I see that it has cotangent and cosecant, but where do we plug this in? We know that cotangent squared of x plus 1 does not appear anywhere in the original problem, but neither does cosecant squared of x. So we need to adjust the identity to fit our problem. The simplest way to do this is by subtracting 1 from both sides. And we can write cotangent squared of u equals cosecant squared of u minus 1. Now we can substitute cosecant squared of x minus 1 for cotangent squared of x in the numerator. We write Pythagorean because we used a Pythagorean identity to simplify the equation, right? Exactly. Now that we have done this, we have a difference of squares as the numerator. We can factor cosecant squared of x minus 1 to cosecant of x minus 1 times cosecant of x plus 1, in the same way that we can factor x squared minus 1 to be x minus 1 times x plus 1. This step is algebra, so in our proof we will write algebra. I see that now we can cancel out cosecant of x plus 1 because it is on both the numerator and the denominator. Yes, that's the next step. This is also an algebraic step so we can write our proof as cosecant of x minus 1 algebra. Now that we have proven the original expression, we have completed the proof.